Small creatures swim through coastal waters at night in search of food. When these animals swim above predatory fish on the ocean floor, they appear to the fish as a dark shadow against the moon and starlit sky. But thanks to a belly full of glowing bacteria, the bobtail squid casts no shadow. Remarkably, the squid can adjust its glow to match the intensity of the light coming from above. The bobtail squid has a special light organ that houses chemiluminescent bacteria. To keep its guests healthy, the squid supplies sugar and other nutrients. In exchange, the bacteria help disguise the squid from predators. In just hatched squid, it's the bacteria that provide the signals that promote the development of its future home. Both the squid and the bacteria can live without the other, but they both do much better when they're together. All plants and animals need nitrogen to survive. But even though the air around us is made mostly of nitrogen, it is in a chemical form that is unusable by all but a few soil-dwelling bacteria. All other living things depend on these bacteria for survival. Most legumes, pod-producing plants including peas and beans, have a special relationship with rhizobia bacteria. These plants have root organs called nodules, where bacteria live inside specialized plant cells. The plant supplies nutrients and oxygen, and the bacteria busily convert nitrogen from the air into ammonium, which it shares with the plant. Ammonium is used by both bacteria and plant to make amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. Because they have access to large amounts of ammonium, lentils, soybeans, and peanuts are good sources of protein. Web-like strands of glomeromycota fungi thread their way through soils around the world. When they meet a plant root, they tunnel in and start sucking out sugars. But far from harming them, the fungi supply the plants with vital nutrients, including phosphates and minerals, natural fertilizers. The fungi act like an extended root system. The relationship between plants and glomeromycota goes back about 400 million years, about the time that the earliest land plants evolved. Today, this fungus lives in symbiosis with about 80% of land plants, contributing to their health and success. Evolutionary biologists suspect that these fungi helped ancient plants develop the ability to survive on land. The fungus can't survive without plants, and plants grow poorly without the fungus. Before the female European bee wolf lays her eggs, she smears a layer of bacteria on the ceiling of her warm, damp, underground brood chamber. These bacteria, which she grows on her antennae, make a cocktail of antimicrobial chemicals that will protect her young offspring. The wasp larva will live underground, alone and immobile for up to nine months. The bacteria left by its mother will repel the harmful fungi and bacteria that live in the soil nearby. Like modern medical doctors attacking infections with multiple antibiotic drugs, the bee wolf takes a broad-spectrum approach to defending her young. The bacteria produce at least nine different antimicrobial compounds that act by different mechanisms, making resistance very unlikely. For decades, scientists have studied the complex symbiotic societies of tropical fungus-eating leafcutter ants. These tiny farmers collect small pieces of leaves, which provide nutrients for their underground fungal gardens. More recently, an observant researcher noticed that a white, powdery crust on the ants' bodies was actually a layer of Streptomyces bacteria. Streptomyces are known for producing antimicrobial compounds, and the species growing on the ants are no exception. The ants spread the bacteria on their fungal gardens to block invasion by bacteria and competing fungi. Not only are these natural pesticides effective against invaders, they also help the garden grow. Scientists aren't sure what the bacteria get out of the relationship, but they suspect they may be receiving nutrients 
Additionally, the ants spread the bacteria, allowing them to colonize a larger domain. Tube worms cover the deepest, darkest reaches of the ocean floor near black smokers, a type of hydrothermal vent. These worms have no mouth and no digestive tract. Instead, they have a special organ called a trophosome, where specialized cells provide a home for sulfur-reducing bacteria. The worms have a feathery respiratory organ that collects everything the bacteria need for their metabolism hydrogen sulfide from the vent water, and carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen from the surrounding seawater. The bacteria, which make up as much as 25% of the mass of the trophosome, supply energy and molecular building blocks to the worm. Tiny soil-dwelling nematode worms team up with red glowing bacteria in a complex parasitic life cycle. The worms infect insects, consuming them from the inside out. The bacteria live inside the worms. The worm can't kill its insect host on its own. It relies on the toxin-producing bacteria for that. The bacteria also make chemicals that block other microbes from growing, slowing decomposition of the dead insect. Once inside the host, the worms mate and lay their eggs. The young worms eat the insect taking up bacteria along with their food. As the food source begins to run out, the bacteria make red, glowing pigments that attract the worm's next meal. When living insects come to feed on the corpse, they eat the worms along with their snack, and the life cycle continues. The ground in Yellowstone National Park is peppered with hot springs, thermal vents, and mud pits. An amazing assortment of living things survive here in boiling water, burning acid, and toxic chemicals. Tropical panic grass grows comfortably in soil temperatures up to 149 degrees Fahrenheit, but only when it is colonized by yeast that in turn is infected with a virus. The virus is the crucial piece of the puzzle. When the grass or the yeast are grown on their own, they both start to wilt when the temperature rises above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Even at lower temperatures, grass colonized with virus-infected yeast grows faster than it would on its own. Water evaporates quickly from hot soil, so panicked grass is also extremely drought-resistant. Researchers study panic grass for clues that could be used to help crop plants grow in hot, dry soil. Plants are an easy food to find, but a challenging food to digest. They are full of tough fiber and low in protein. Since plants can't hide, many species protect themselves from being eaten by making toxic chemicals. To cope with the high toxic load, many herbivores have evolved guts that are comfortable places for microbes to live. Some even have specialized digestive compartments where the conditions are just right for efficient microbial fermentation. The gut microbes benefit herbivores by breaking down toxins, building amino acids, and breaking down complex carbohydrates into molecules the animals can absorb. The gut microbiome is highly tailored to diet. Populations living on different food sources have different microbes in their guts, 